Today I have in front of me a 22 year old coffee grinder and this is the Ranchilio Rocky that I found used off of Facebook Marketplace. So full disclosure, I bought this grinder with a Ranchilio Silvia for $150, both about 22 years old, made in 2001. You can find that by um, a date on the bottom of the grinder and the bottom of the Silvia. The Silvia, however, did not work like expected. Um, there was a small issue that they said, which was supposed to be a spring, but turned out to be an issue with um, the boiler wasn't completely attached with each other, which allowed it to drip out water. And then eventually the heating element inside the boiler broke, which was gonna be a $400 fix on a 22 year old machine. So I didn't do it. So in other words, I paid uh, 150 bucks for a broken uh, Ranchilio Sylvia and a um, working Ranchilio Rocky. Um, and I wanna go a little bit over it. This one is uh, one of two different versions. There is a doser version, which has this thing on front of it, I'm gonna explain that, versus a doser, doserless one, which does not have this. Uh, both of these now continue to cost $440, depending on which one you bit, get. I believe they're both actually the same price. Um, this is probably one of the heaviest grinders that I owe, own, um, and it's quite heavy. Um, it's got a power button on the front, power cable on the side, um, a very poorly put Ranchilio Silvia logo on the back, it's crooked and backwards, and this doser thing. Um, so basically I wanna kinda of go over my experience of using this and whether or not I would recommend buying one new or used for that matter. Um, so first off, you simply put the beans in the top here, move the lid, and they have this little adjustment here that you click down and you can move and rotate the, step the stepped burr set on the inside. This has a, I believe, 50, or 55 millimeter flat burr, which means there's basically two discs on top of each other versus the traditional kind of cone burr seen in most lower end um, coffee grinders, which is gonna be a cone shaped and the grinds go in it versus um, kind of through it, if that makes sense. A little bit, um, I can elaborate that more if you need to. Um, so basically you grind here and then it goes inside this, which is the doser. And that once it gets inside the doser, there's some, I'm gonna try to turn it here a little bit, on the inside of the doser, there are some fans on the inside. So you simply click this lever on the side and it moves the fans and then it allows it go, the grounds to go into the portafilter cradle here. Um, so basically this grinder is perfect to retaining coffee grounds, which means if you put 18 grams of coffee in there, you are gonna lose some um, because it's gonna not get through um, either the top part of the grinder into the doser or it's not gonna get out of the doser when you do this. And frankly, this is just super annoying when you're clicking this five or six times to get your grounds out into your portafilter. However, I have had good luck getting this in both a 58 millimeter portafilter and the Breville 54 millimeter portafilter if you have a Barista Express or Bambino. Um, this grinder will shine if you have the ability to do flow control, which is adjust the flow rate of the water or um, pressure profiling, which would be something that you could find on a flare, for example, where you control the pressure going into it. Um, when you have that amount, it's easier to kind of dial in and it's easier to compensate a little bit for the grounds that are retained on the inside of it because you're your overall resistance will be different if it's not the full 18 grams you put in there. Uh, so granted a lot of information here, but this gets grinds like crazy stuck inside here, crazy stuck in um, the chute going into the doser, and it's just kind of a clunky mess of using a grinder. However, this grinder is 22 years old. Um, and having a grinder that has lasted for 22 years well says a lot about how well it was built. Um, frankly, like I feel like this has so much life into it. I'm actually giving it as a gift to a friend, um, but it works and grinds really well and you can get really, really great shots out of it, um, especially with that flow control. Um, I had really, really drinkable shots with a light roast on my uh, Breville Bambino with some flow control and some uh, great shots on my Rocket R58 as well, um, all with the ability just to simply use a 22 year old grinder is absolutely incredible. Um, so basically kind of where I'm at with this grinder is if you find a good deal, and what I mean is a good deal for this is um, 
under $100. $100 or less, I would say, would be a good deal, which I would consider this grinder for using espresso at home. Um, ideally, the getting the one without the doser would be the best option to get if you have the ability to do that, um, but the doser is still probably worth around $100 for it. And the reason I say that, because any more than that, you can get the opportunity to get a single dosing grinder that um, allows you to have stepless, which would be mean there's no clicks in between the grind settings. So you can really, really hone in and tune in the grinder to the setting that you'd prefer. Um, it also uh, allows you to do a single work, single dosing workflow, which means um, you can put in 18 grams of coffee and get that 18 grams out. And honestly, you can do pour over with it, um, some of these grinders as well. And the grinder that I would recommend for that is a uh, Baratza ESP. I've never used one, but I've heard great things about it. Or I would look toward the SD40 um, by Turin Grinders or the SK40 by Turin Grinders, both coming in under $200. Um, I think you get superb taste from those. And overall, the workflow of having those, even if they might not last 22 years, um, there's no track record on how long those last. Um, we've been going on a couple years with them and they've been fine. But the workflow on that makes it worth probably the extra $100 in my opinion when it comes to that uh, because using it every, money, uh, every morning is a bit clunky. Um, but you do get great results. So that on the other hand, um, this can be heavily modded. So if you tilt this grinder drastically, so if it's like at a 45 degree angle, you're gonna have way less retention and it's gonna be a way better workflow. And if it doesn't have a doser, then I would kind of get in the realm of uh, recommending it more to any user who would is looking for a, a grinder. But that does take a little bit of work. So if you can find a great deal on one, I wouldn't pass it up, but if you're looking at, there's just a lot of better options out there for $440 now. Um, the DF64 is a perfect option. They have uh, anti-static now in the new version two, in the Gen 2 of them, and they're 64 millimeter flat burrs. On top of that, they do have a bellow, so they are zero retention, and you're getting those at about $400 as well. So if you're looking at purchasing one of these, it's not the best option anymore, but I do think it's incredible how great a coffee you could have 22 years ago with this thing. Like this thing in a Ranchilio Sylvia, that's a, a great setup. Um, we'll leave you happy with happy results, assume, assuming you have to use it. It's a little finicky, but overall, it's a great grinder. Um, so yeah, 100 bucks, buy one used. Um, don't think twice about it. Make, just, make sure it powers on and make sure it grinds if you can. Um, if you don't have the ability to test it, make sure you try to get it a little cheaper. Um, but overall, great grinder. Um, I'd recommend it at that price point, but it is very clunky and very finicky to use and can be just kind of cumbersome when you're using it. Uh, but if you've made it this far, if you could please like and subscribe, that helps me produce more content as a YouTuber. And I want to thank you so much for watching this video.